Bored, so good to meet you. You too. You got listen, it's hot in here, but we're about to do some really cool stuff. Yes, we we're are. We're about to make glass, right? Yes. So first of all, what is glass made of? So it starts out as silica, which is sand, and uh, calcium and sodium carbonate. Let's get right to it. So we'll start off with doing some safety stuff with glasses. Thank you for the safety first. And I'm gonna take a gather of glass. This is our blow pipe. So this furnace is at 2100 degrees and we just wind it up on the tip of the pipe like honey. Okay. Now we're using two furnaces. This is the first one. Yes, this is where all of the molten glass sits. It's sitting in a big ceramic pot. And then we're just picking up some color. This is just colored glass that's broken up into little shards and we call this frit. Now the first oven was 2100 degrees. What's the second oven? This one's a little colder. It's at around 1800 or so. Oh, colder. <laughs> and this just keeps it at a workable temperature. We're just constantly rotating. And why are you constantly rotating it? So if I stop rotating, it will just slowly fall off the end of the pipe. As it heats up, it moves around a little more. So you kind of have to keep up with it. So we're using a wooden tool that we keep soaked in water all the time. Okay. And the water just helps cool it? This cools it down, but it also is making it symmetrical and condensing it a little bit. We're trying to get it to a nice temperature so that we have a, a good amount of control over it. And then we'll start to add some air. Make that a little bigger. And then we need to make a spot where we can take it off the pipe. Uh, we have to make a weak spot where we can actually break it off. So I'm gonna start to put a little constriction up here at the top. Oh, I see it. Groove. Now the color changed from orange based to now blue based. Yeah, so while it's really hot, it's all just going to look like that bright orange. And then as it cools down, the colors are gonna start to come out but it's actually not gonna be true until it completely cools down to room temperature. All right, I'm gonna hang this up. We take a big gather of glass and I'm just gonna drop that on the table. It's so hot, it's gonna make a nice little circle. And we'll stick that to the base. This will be the foot it sits on. So now we'll get another pipe ready. We'll stick this to the base. Then we put a little bit of water on the top, right on that line. So it knows right where it should break. I tap the rod and it pops off. That was awesome. But we gotta get that right back to the heat or else it could crack. start to put some upwards pressure on there. And that just slowly starts to open up the vessel, but it cools down very fast. You only get a maybe like 20 seconds to really work with it. So as I turn, it wants to just flare open on the edge of this. So now that it's open all the way, as I heat this up, it's just gonna try to flare open. And I'm gonna start to spin a little faster and we just let that flare. And then we let gravity do the rest. And give it those wavy edges. We'll put a little bit of water on the base. So that'll tell it right where to break. It creates a little bit of thermal shock. Mm -hmm. Then it should just take a little tap to pop that off. <laughs> so now it's not finished. Apparently you're putting it in a kiln. Yes. What does the kiln do? The kiln is gonna keep this at about 900 degrees. Okay. So this is going to hold it at a steady temperature so that it doesn't crack. And then when I leave today, I'm gonna send that down on a cycle for about 12 hours. 
So that's gonna cool it down slowly over that time. So we started at 2000 degrees Fahrenheit to get the glass. We shaped it at about 1800 degrees Fahrenheit. Yes. And now we're curing it in a kiln at around 900 degrees Fahrenheit. But for about 12 hours, what's happening over 12 hours? So it's just cooling it down slowly over that time. And that takes a lot of the stress off of the glass. If it would have stayed out here for another minute or so, it would have just dropped in temperature way too fast, and then it would have cracked and fell apart. That's the coolest example of the intersection of science and art. Awesome. <laughs>